Hey guys, so this video is about the 6715 that's sitting over here. Pretty much got most of the... I still got a little ways to go on the 6170M. Uh, I got busy on the cat, getting it out of here as you can see. It's not there anymore. I got the valve all resealed and got it out of here. I went and pressure washed it off. I got it cleaned up for them. I, I uh, made sure the finals had oil and I greased the holder assemblies on the track frames. But anyway, that one's out the door. Uh, I've been messing with a John Deere that's back there. That one's kind of confusing. It's, I don't know what to make of it right now. Um, it only does it when it's cold. When it's stone cold and you first start it up, it will default to park. It will throw some uh, TCU codes with transmission control unit codes. And it'll do some different things like that. And, but it, it won't, by the time you get into the addresses to monitor it, like TCU address 47 and TCU address number 11, to monitor the speeds of the sensors and stuff it, it then it, by the time you get there then it quits doing it and then you can sit there and drive it around and it'll be fine it only does it when it's cold and it just it's really weird i've never seen one do that before but anyway uh on to the 6715 i need to get something rolling along on this because the old springtime is a sneaking up on me very quickly so this one here has got quite an elaborate list of problems here really for one tractor <clears throat> the main problem is as you can see the way the tires are scuffing they bought these tires brand new last summer and well, actually almost into the fall and this happened just during the fall and both tires are like that and the mechanic for them Moss he noticed that the tires were scuffing and he thought, why is it doing that? Those are new tires. And then he got up there and his first thing was, well, hey, you know, he told the operator, are you driving around with the diff lock on? Well, the operator was not driving around with the diff lock on. The diff lock is stuck on. It won't come off. And I don't remember, I think it's hydraulically applied, I think. But I remember checking it all out and, uh, I'm gonna check it again to make sure because uh, what we're gonna do is where is that at? I got it unplugged. I got it unplugged for some reason, but anyways, I must have been messing around with it. I'm gonna pull this fitting out right here and I can take a, uh, like a compu check fitting in there and we'll just see uh, pressure on, pressure off, all that kind of stuff. And I remember I remember checking it out last fall when they were using it during harvest and I remember telling Mike, Mike passed away on me, uh, but I remember telling Mike that <clears throat> it was inside the rear end there's something wrong in there because everything electrically and the solenoid was stroking. I remember checking it but I'm going to just do diligence because it's been a while and I'm going to do it again just to verify. <clears throat> and the other thing was he... This thing barely fits on a low boy at a 102 inch wide low boy trailer. And I'll tell you what, uh, the low boy driver wanted me to back it off. So I get on the tractor and fire it up. And of course he didn't tell me that it didn't hardly have any steering because the hydraulics weren't working on it. So I go to back it off and I mean, he didn't even tell me and the damn thing don't steer. And I said, hey dude, <laughs> it, it doesn't steer and I mean, it's right on the edge the tires the middle of the tires are right on the edge on each side i'm thinking dude uh why do i always get to do this anyway <laughs> so i got it backed off there it took me a little i had to use my turning brakes and and i got it off of there but without dumping it off the trailer but i got it off and uh anyways it's got a brand new hydraulic pump sitting there in that box right there that we got to put on there and then the other thing is something going on i don't know i don't know if there's something that they screwed up on the linkage here but it will not go in any of the gears it only has one gear the power quad part of it is working but the range part of it let's see wait a second what the hell's going on here what 
is going on something that's not oh they must have broke a cable or something see how that's just see how that's just moving back and forth so what happened is they must have broke a cable I'm thinking let's go check that out while we're here yeah it's only got one gear so it's stuck in range What's happening is they probably broke the cable, I'm guessing. Or they might have broke a shift fork. I've seen these guys break shift forks in these quite a few times. So what do we got here? This is where two people would be very handy to see what's going on. One guy could move the shift lever and the other guy could figure out maybe what the hell's going on. So let's see what we got. I'm trying to remember what was range and What does what? Let me go get my other light. What about underneath here? What do we got going on here? Hmm. Okay. Damn, we might be tearing the transmission out of it too, and which if we're gonna tear the rear end out of it, it's gotta come out of there anyway. Is this linkage here hooked up? You know, let me see what we got going on. Let me get my other light. Yeah. Hmm. So. I, I, I was shifting it underneath and it didn't feel like it was binding up or anything. Let's check it again over here, huh? Might put a cable in it, might find you have something else going on. Maybe this one right here. Oh, it's moving it. Yeah, there it goes. Maybe this is the age of the cable, I don't know. I guess I'll order a cable for it. So I've got two of the three problems diagnosed. I'm gonna go back to, that should be brake pressure, clutch pressure, that's for the PTO, and the PTO brake. Yeah, we'll take a test plug and put in that right there and check that pressure. So, it takes pressure to engage the diff lock and no pressure to disengage it. So, I had it unplugged and I drove it around the circle and it was definitely locked up. You could tell by driving it, it was, you know, well you could tell from when you drove it in here and when you turned around this corner right here, see how it scuffed, scuffed the, the floor right there coming around the corner. That tells you the diff lock is on. But there's still something wrong with the button or the wiring going to it too. I'm only getting nine volts. I got a good ground on it. It's got a constant ground and then it's a power switched from the button. But there's still something going on from either the button or the wiring going to it because I'm only getting nine volts but it doesn't ever change. You can sit there with your power probe on that on the positive side of that plug and it never changes. But I, I verified it. What I did is I got my power probe rigged up right here. You can actually hear the solenoid valve click as well. Hear it click. Well, I can't hear it now. I probably hit the wrong terminal now. But Anyway, I had it rigged up to where I could watch the gauge right here and I turned, started the tractor and then I put power with my rocker switch on my power probe and with power applied and a ground it went up to 275 PSI and when you let off it went to zero. 
So that tells you right there, with me driving around with this thing unplugged and no power applied to that, that we know that our solenoid valve is working correctly and we know that something is wrong internally in the tractor and the diff lock is stuck on. So, but we need to, we gotta fix this before it leaves. We gotta figure out why, why this isn't working as well. So the easiest thing for to do on this situation is before we pull the rops and the finals and all that stuff, if we've got a rear end problem, it may not, I got a feeling we're gonna be doing it anyway, but uh, the easiest thing to do here to verify and see what's going on is just dump the transmission fluid on it and pull this PTO off the back and uh, then you'll get a good look and see what's going on inside. So that's, that's what we're gonna do next. Turn this tire and that tire should not move. Yeah, it's stuck on. <sighs> yeah. The diff lock is stuck on it, so go ahead and take the jack off, dump the oil, see what the hell's wrong with it. Well, one thing is for certain, the hydraulics don't work work very well when there's no oil in it. It had five gallons in it. Still a little bit drizzling in there. I don't even think it's got hardly anything in that bucket, but these usually hold about 15 gallons and there was five gallons in it. So it's 10 gallons low on hydraulic fluid. Amazing there ain't more problems than there are, but before I change that pump out, we're gonna fill it full of oil. So anyway, so I'd let you know about that. So anyway, guys, what I'm gonna do to this thing, I'm not gonna pull this whole cab and all this stuff off of here. You know, the whole the whole canopy. What I'm gonna do, let's see here. This is bolted to this plate. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna grab the top of this thing with my crane, the top of the canopy. And I'm going to pull this pin and this pin, and I'm going to slide that top piece off, lay it on the ground, and then I'm going to grab the back end of this thing somehow, if I have to put a jack in her there or something, I figure out how I'm going to do that. Maybe before I lift that off, well, I'm going to think this through here. Trying to think of a way to do this without pulling all the shit off. So all I need to do is pull the rear end. I don't have to pull the pinion, so I don't have to pull any of that stuff up off front. So my idea is to get it up high enough, get that top piece off of there. The reason I want to take the top piece off, because once I get the top piece off, or should I even worry about that? You know, we'll just leave the top piece on it. I'm sorry, I'm just thinking out loud, guys, and you guys are thinking with me. It'd be easier to manage. I was thinking I could just take this take this part, the canopy off, you know, that's bolted to this final drive. And then I could see I've got these big tall jack stands and I can hold the I can hold the tractor up with that with those jack stands. That's what I want to do. Cause I don't want to pull all that and pull all the shift cables and all that shit out of there. God dang, man, but I'm not going to be able to get in over here because the fuel tank's in the way to prop it up with... But you know what? That ain't going to make any difference. That's rigid enough. I almost guarantee you it's rigid enough that one will hold it. It ain't going to go nowhere because you're going to have that other mount in the corner too. So once I even get it out of there, I can still probably... Even if I have to, I can put a block or something underneath here. I ain't worried about that. So let's quit talk... Oh, you know, I got to... I got a Kenworth out here that's got a check engine light on. I gotta go. I might go ahead and do that right quick while the weather's really nice. Because next week it's gonna get really cold and shitty again. So gotta enjoy it while it lasts, huh? Wait, here's this thing anyway. This, is, this has gotta be like a. Is it heavy urea? 
you? Yeah. Uh, the 2014 with that piece of shit Pack RMX 13 in it. I hate those engines. They're garbage. Anyways, let me uh, let me go ahead. I'm gonna hook my laptop up to this truck and check it out. Okay, well, that worked out pretty damn slick, man. That didn't take me long at all to pop that off of there. Then I just put a lift and eye where one of the pinholes were. And lifted this up enough. And I was going to use my big tall jack stands, but I got to thinking, you know, I kind of want to use those under the tractor once I get the tires and the finals off. And once I get the tires off. So what I did is I just took a big block of wood and stuck it right right up underneath the cab there up there on top of the transmission so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these arms off right here two bolts here uh, this one's got a light attached to it so we'll have to be mindful of that All right, well guys we're plugging along here these are loose. I got the wheels off. I think there's calcium in them skinny tires. Man, they're heavy. That's why I just didn't want to take them any further and I had to roll them over there. My cracker jackass there, it's all about all I want to do that. But anyway, these are heavy too. I got these loose. You gotta get two big six inch, three quarter inch drive extensions and a three quarter impact and go clear up in here the length of this to get these bolts out of here it's heavy so it's just kind of hanging on the axle right now I'm gonna wait till I get ready I'm gonna go ahead and get this these uh, oh, these uh, what you call stabilizers for the draft arms off uh, it's pretty simple this one is anyway the, the other one don't have that kind of pin in it get the camera over here Go ahead and get that out of there. Same song and dance on the other side. What else on this side here? Can't remember. Did that fuel tank? Yeah, that fuel tank can stay there. Yeah, that can stay there. So I got to get the. I'm trying to think whether I should just pull the rock shaft off. Boy, whoever routed that hose, that ain't such a great idea, is it? I guess there ain't no, there's got to be a different way of doing that. I mean, the hitch is all the way down, but it's right up against the hose. I think I would have made a 90 right here and come over here or something and came in this side in the center here somewhere instead of putting it down there. I don't know, that don't seem like that's the best thing in the world. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, somebody's lost a pin on this one over here, that nice pin. This one's in here. I like this style of pens a lot easier to deal with. Finger getters. Okay, then I'm trying to decide what I want to do here. I think I'll just drop. Those are not attached to the bottom of this. Well, this pin here is though. Actually, wait. Yeah, they are. So this pin here, at the bare minimum, will have to come out. This pin on the bottom down here. So I guess pretty much just take everything loose and get it out of the way, I guess. Kind of the way it's looking. I guess we'll start by 
go ahead and pull the draft arms clear off of it. And I'll just let them hang on the ground and we'll get these pins out. And then we can start dealing with start dealing with the uh, hitch cylinders and getting them out of there. And then write this down. These usually don't come out this easy. They're usually cut and torch type thing. But this one's, it's free. I just gotta give her a little bit of help. Well, I just take this here washer and this air hammer and just get right up against that washer. And Like a so, best tool that was ever invented right there, I'm telling you. Uh, and this pin here is not, usually the, usually the upper pins come out fairly easy. But this one's not. Let's see, can I... Hammer time. Okay. We'll get a little anti sneeze on her when we go back together. I'll just shove this one back in for now and put the spacer on her. And that one there can go back in there. Put the pins in her so we don't lose those. There's nothing more aggravating than going back together with something and can't find any of the parts. They're scattered everywhere, which can happen in the heat of battle. So we're getting close to where what we're gonna do now is I gotta get these bottom pins out down here, but you can see. They've been rose budded before. Yeah, these have had a rose bud on them before. This one over here has anyway. How about this one. This one has not had a rose bud on it, so it might get one. Okay, we've got the finals and brakes out of it. If you've never seen one of these. There's your brake disc. There's your sun shaft. Pistons back here behind it, hanging on the shaft. Or not the piston, but the vacuum plate. There's your. Hold on a second. Being a hard-headed bastard. There's your. There's your finals. There. They look in good shape. Both sides do. All right. Here's your bearing retainer for your side bearings. Pusher holes here. And I forgot. It's not that side of the hole. Well, we can figure that out real quick. I know how to skin that cat. Watch this. Show you some tough. Okay, let me go get a 19 on. Show you some tough. Where is my As you can tell, one of my favorite movies is Lonesome Dove. 
he says, he says, he says, he can't hit nothing from there. He's just wasting his bullets. And he says, if that old man ain't tough, he gets that long range rifle out and he says, I'll show him some tough. <laughs> Then starts lobbing him in there and he can't hit him and oh oh Gus McCree there, which was Robert Duvall, puts his long range sights up on his 3030 Winchester and lobs one in there and hits him right in the gut and gut shoots him, you know. <laughs> I love that movie. bastard anyway. So what you do is get a bar take some of the weight off of it put it right under there perfect world ceiling rings on the end of this shaft too because you have to have to have some way to get the oil to the brakes out here keep track of your shit shims and such This is your actual piston assembly here for your brakes. We'll probably pull it out too and put new seals on it while we got it apart. I mean, it would only make sense to do so. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then we're going to pull the rear end out of it. Buttermilk. Uh. 
Okay. What does the pinion look like? Does it look good? I don't know. I had I had one of these apart shit three or four years ago. I don't remember pulling the I don't remember if I put, pulled the pinion out or not. I think I did. Because the uh I don't know if it was this one or not. I don't think it was this one. But, uh, it might have been. Shit, I don't know. One of these, I... Yeah, I think I did a video on it, too, but... I, uh... What was the deal with that thing? Snap ring or something broke. This is the main shaft of the range transmission, the pinion shaft. And I think one of the snap rings blow, broke, and it was popping out of gear or something. I had to pull it all apart. Okay, uh, yeah, the diff lock is underneath here, so I guess we'll undo the ring gear and pull that off of there. going to want to fall. Well, most of the time they do. This one didn't fall. Let me start a bolt. I'll get a block. In case it falls, it hits the block of wood. It doesn't break a tooth on the ring gear. Pissing doesn't appear to be stuck. So what in the hell is going on with him? Pissing seals look good in it too. I wonder what the hell the deal is. And I flopped it upside down and got the side gear out of it, the hub. But definitely see that these are stuck. They're stuck together. Still not seeing what the problem is. Why is the diff lock stuck on on it?
little confused here, guys. A little confused. Huh. See, it's turning freely now. confused on this one as to what happened. The only thing that I can think of, either either this piston it wasn't really stuck though. As I stacked up all my clutches back in there and there's nothing wrong with those. And I can, I can turn it now and hold the other side. So what the hell? So I bolt this back on in the ring gear, tie it all back together, and then see if I can turn it then? Still doesn't make any sense why. Because the way this thing works, guys, is... Okay, so here, this part here goes, this part of the hub, you'll see two holes here. There's one here, one down here. That's your oil comes through. It comes up against the piston to compress the clutches. There's no springs or anything in there to release them. And then, uh, see these two sealing rings right here on this part, the bearing retainer? So the oil's actually, so this is your brake line right here. This little line's your brake line, your brake piston bleeder. And the line behind that's coming off the diff lock solenoid right here this is the supply to the solenoid this is the oil supply to the diff lock itself and it goes back in here behind the brake line so it's fed in back in there somewhere oh I know what it does it goes in through this it goes in that's what these feed holes are for I don't think that other side has the feed holes on it because it doesn't have the diff lock on this side. Yeah, see this one doesn't have any feed holes. So what happens is that diff lock, or this piece here, bolts up against there. And it's got holes in this, and it feeds the oil back through the between the two sealing rings. And then they go into here, into these holes inside this, which in turn come out these holes here. And then they come in here and compress the clutches. I mean, there's no springs to return them. Just trying to think if there was something that was worn that was putting too much tension on that or something. Or was it not exhausting the oil off of it and something was plugged up? I was looking for thinking, you know, how is the oil getting back out of there? once it's applied once once this coil takes goes back to to you know no oil flow how does that piston exhaust the oil off that chamber i guess it just goes back through the supply line i'm guessing if this is open no that wouldn't be right hmm okay guys so found the problem with the help of a good friend that I met on YouTube years ago. Name's Jim, he's back in PA, he's a heavy equipment mechanic for case construction, but he worked for CAT for years, he worked for Cummins for years. And he says, you know, I was explaining to him what I had found here. and I said, man, I'm not really seeing the problem here. I don't want to put this whole thing back together without de definitely finding what's wrong with it. Because I know it'll come back and bite me in the ass. And uh, he said, look at that hub that those internal discs slide on. He said, I bet you those suckers got notches in them. And man, he is 100% right on the money. There's the problem. They're rougher than hell. And if those discs get a little bit of side load or anything, they hang up on there is what happens. And I've had this happen before and I just didn't think of it. 
Uh, so what we're going to do here, guys, that's the problem. Those internal discs, once that clutch pack sandwiches together, and this is not a, you know, there's no springs to return the clutch piston back on this clutch pack. So it, do, it wouldn't take much for that to hang in there. So I'm going to get a new hub, which would be a new side gear. I'm going to get a new piston because there's so much work involved in getting these apart. I'm going to get a new piston with a seal, inner and outer seal, new clutch pack. Uh, I'm going to get a new brake disc because these brake discs are delaminating. See how they're chipping there, coming apart? I'm going to plop this pistons out for the brakes, put new seals on there. And then we'll put her back together and we should be good to go. But then we've also got to figure out our power and ground problem going to this valve. That's not right either. So anyways, uh, everybody say thanks to Jim back in PA. Good man.